All right, welcome. Let's stand. Stand with me. You know the drill. Let's go ahead and start getting warm now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Another Wednesday night in the house. We're excited to be here. I'm excited to be here with you. If you're watching on live stream, by TV, by internet, welcome. Facebook, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Stand with us. I just want to encourage you real quick. It says in Psalm 1, 145, verse 9, the Lord is good to all. The Lord is good to all. And in verse 15, it says, the eyes of all look expectantly to you. And you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come into this house as a body and worship you and praise you, Father, that it would not just be vain repetition, Lord, but that we come in here because we remember your goodness. And we come in here expectantly, Father, to receive exactly what you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just worship you tonight. You are worthy of our praise and our worship. We honor you tonight. Healing is here. Healing is here. Healing is here. I receive it. Healing is here. Healing is here. Healing is here. I believe it. I believe it. I reach my hands. I reach my hands to the heavens. I lift my eyes where my help comes from. I look to
<laughs> Jesus is here. Jesus is here. And he's my healer. And he's my healer. Oh, Jesus is here. Whatever you need, he's here right now. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He's my healer. And he's my healer. Trust in you. Hallelujah, Father. We worship you today. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Lord, we worship you. We worship you.
but now I see Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone
amazing grace He wiped away every tear He wiped away all our shame We're so thankful for your grace Joseph, just continue to play. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Oh, I'm so grateful that I encountered grace. Apostle Paul was on the road of Damascus and the glory of God and surrounded about him and shown about him and knocked him off of his donkey and and what happened he encountered grace encountered grace thank you father thank you father John chapter 16 Verse 22, it says, Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice. Let me read that again. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy will no one will take from you. Right now, you, you may have sorrow. But I, I want you to know that Jesus sees you. Thank you, Father. Right now, you have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice. You know... We talk about the presence of God. We talk about the favor of God. We talk about the anointing of God, healing, prosperity, whatever it is. It's all an encounter with grace. Later on in that chapter, he said, in the world you'll have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And the Amplified, I believe, says, I've deprived of its power to harm you. Encountering grace. Every day is an opportunity for us to encounter grace. Come here on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. You're, you are encountering grace. Because if you're hearing the word of God, you're encountering grace. If you're in the presence of God, you're encountering grace. If you respond to an altar call, you're meeting face to face with grace. Before we go forward, I, I, I want to just open up the altar. If you have need of prayer and, and needing someone to agree with you and pray for you, maybe it's maybe you you have a decision coming up, or maybe it's maybe it's healing in your body. Whatever it is, I want you to come to the altar, and 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 myself and others we're going to pray for you. Encounter grace. We didn't come to church on a on a Wednesday night just to go through the motions. But we came to encounter grace. To encounter grace, to encounter God's ability, to encounter God's strength. Encountering grace. Thank you, Father. Joseph, can you pray for me? Nikki and Annette, can you pray for them? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Just lift your hands. 
just everyone across this auditorium watching at home, just lift your hands where you are. Right now you might have sorrow, but Jesus said, I'll see you again and you will rejoice. What does that represent? That represents the finished work. Jesus saying, I'm seeing you again because I'm going to the Father, I'm going to the cross, and I'm going to, going to hell on behalf of you. I'm going to take stripes on my back for you. I'm going to deal with your captivity. I'm going to deal with your brokenness. I'm going to deal with your separation from God. And, and I'm going to see you again. And when I see you again, you're going, to, you're going to rejoice because the work is finished. See, we can rejoice tonight because a work is finished. Yeah, you, yeah, the enemy will come and things will happen and you might have challenges in your life but, and, and sorrow will try to come in. But I want you to know that Jesus told the disciples and the disciple John told us that I will see you again and you will rejoice. And if you don't have a reason to rejoice tonight, then maybe you need to be down at the altar also. We have something to rejoice about. Right now you have sorrow, but I will see you again. And when I see you, you will rejoice. And then he says, the joy that you will have, the world will not be able to take it from you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Can we rejoice? Can we rejoice in the finished work? Can we rejoice in the finished work of Christ? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah, Father. We rejoice in you. We rejoice in the finished work. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your strength. Strengthen, strengthen, equip. Thank you, Father, for the finished work. Hallelujah. Where sorrow has tried to come in, where heaviness has tried to come in, Oh, Father, we, we, give, we give every bit of heaviness to you and we release the weight and the care of it. We release the weight and the care of it. Oh, thank you for your anointing. Hallelujah. That's where two or three are gathered. Thank you for your presence and peace where you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that as we showed up tonight, I thank you that you are here and you are alive and you are, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank you that you're making us strong from the inside out. You're strengthening every single one of us, Father, in our inner man. I thank you, Lord, for, hallelujah, quickening hearts and minds and lives today. Hallelujah. I thank you that the healer is in this place. The healer, the restorer is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I bind the enemy from continuing to work in this situation. And I take authority over every bit of deception and all that's been working in behind the scenes. I declare what the thief has stolen, he can steal no longer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you make a show. You make a show of the enemy openly in this situation. Hallelujah. That can't be denied. That can't be put out. That can't be, can't be uh, pushed away. That can't be, hallelujah, that can't be lied about. That can't, hallelujah, that can't go away. And underneath, underneath where no one else can see it. But it all comes out into the open. Hallelujah. And this is a season of freedom. This is a season, hallelujah, for truth to come forth. For truth to come forth. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Sorogo do rogo shendele geni Ibrogo shatar rabo so sor rabai O i andolo koso sor rabai Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Rebecca. Rebecca. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Korobo go so so. Just place your hand right here. O serindishti. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving birth to new dreams and new visions. Giving birth to new things. So, so, so. 
Sokoto, just continue to minister for me. Irodogo Sokoto, Rababa, Sete, Rodogo Sokoto, Rabaya. Ezende, Rindele, Moko, Sokoto, Rabaya. Don't put up with discouragement. Don't put up with discouragement. Discouragement is attack of the enemy. You know, there's a, there's a, there's something that the enemy uses, which we know as deception, but it's, he's very subtle, you know, and there, there's a phrase that, that we can attach with discouragement because we've all been there, but there's this attitude of, oh, we all face discouragement and therefore we kind of let discouragement stay. And we let discouragement stay. And it's like, oh, well, discouragement is normal. It's just a normal way of life. It's a normal way of things. And I'm not saying that if you're discouraged, then the enemy is, you know, you're giving room to enemy or <coughs> anything like that. But what I want you to see is don't put up with it. just been just overwhelmed by discouragement just hallelujah just come up here just come up here thank you father it can't stay it can't stay hallelujah <coughs> it can't stay hallelujah it can't stay Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's nothing to be ashamed about. We all, we all have discouragement. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Annette. Pray for her. Hallelujah. I believe there's some more people. I'm just being obedient. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, the Hallelujah. He lifts every burden. He lifts every burden. Oh, hallelujah. Come here, give me a... Where have you been? Everything that you've done since you stepped away. 
Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. Thank you. I believe. Drew, you have come hug him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I believe hallelujah. Thank in you. you. Hallelujah. We just worship the Lord. You've been good to me. You have set me free. I believe in you. Lord, I believe. I Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We believe in you. We believe in you. Thank you for an encounter with grace. That when we've been carrying heavy things and trying to carry heavy things, when we encounter grace, it lifts every weight. I declare that every weight would be lifted. Father, just stretch your hands towards the cameras, those watching, by, watching at home. Father, we lift, up, we lift up those that are watching by way of internet tonight. Oh, we declare that they will be strengthened with all might in their inner man. We declare how the enemy has come in. We declare that, the, that God is coming in stronger. Hallelujah, flooding their home, flooding their bodies, pushing out anything and everything that doesn't belong. Father, I thank you that, that they are victorious. I thank you, Father, that they are whole from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I thank you, Father, that, that discouragement has to leave them right now. Hallelujah, every yoke of oppression has to leave them right now. And I thank you for the peace of God and the joy of the Lord to flood them right now. Hallelujah. I thank you where they have not known peace. I thank you right now, they know peace. Where they haven't known joy, right now they know joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we thank you for it. And we rejoice. And we rejoice in Jesus' name. Give them a shout of praise, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Father. to someone and give them a high five. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Eric, and Joseph, and Corey. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> And um, actually, I was up here, well, early this morning, but then I was up here last night as well, um, studying, and um, Pastor Carla was going to minister, um, but she's, she may be ministering next Wednesday instead. She she's, uh, was in Africa for 30 years, has been with us since COVID, and, and, um, and she pastors the, the church that we're connected to in Kenya, in, in, uh, in Nairobi. Uh, but she's been with us um, for a couple of years since COVID started. And, and so I'm looking forward to her to be able to share with you and on Wednesday nights. So, uh, so when she said, you know what, hey, let me, I, need, I need to hold off. And I was like, I said, no problem. I said, I said we'll, we'll pray about what direction we need to take. And so I was up here late last night. And, um, and I thought I was going to be preaching, and, but I, it'll be for another time. I thought I was going to talk about encountering grace. Um, but I don't believe that's the, actually the direction, even though we flow that way. With worship and and just that came out and uh, we'll get into that at, a, at another time and uh 
But I, I want to deal with the, the aspect of encounter. You know, that's what our theme is for all of, all of uh, 2022 on Wednesday nights is encounter. And, um, and, uh, and how many of you can be honest and say, you know what, I, I've, I encountered God. I encountered Jesus. Just lift your hands up. You know, I mean, I encountered, I, I, I encountered the presence of the Lord as, as a young child. I, I, I encountered um, as a teenager, and some of you have heard me tell the stories on when I had someone prophesy over me when I was 12 years old and had, didn't, had no desire to serve God, and they told me these two people were praying over me and, and praying in tongues, which I thought was crazy, and, uh, and they prophesied and said, he's going he's gonna to be a preacher. And I'm saying, no, he's not. <laughs> You know, and, and said, but even I knew it was something real. Um, and, but yeah, I felt the presence of the Lord. But yet in me, I was like, I, I don't want to do that. That's not what I'm going to what I'm going to do. And and so for so I, I can look at my life of where I've had encounters. But but just because we have an encounter doesn't mean that's where our journey ends. See, the encounter is where it, it may begin. But our life needs to be built on continued encounters. In Philippians chapter 3, actually, let me get there first. <clears throat> now, Dr. Saul ministered on Sunday morning, and he talked about an attitude change. And, um, I mean, we, we, all need, we all need attitude changes at a time. You know, sometimes there's, there's things that are happening, and I may respond a certain way, and my wife might say something, and she didn't say you need an attitude change, but how she said it was, I need an attitude change. <laughs> but, but, I, but I think we're, we're all there. We need an attitude change. And, um, and, and so there's an attitude that I believe that we need to fix in our hearts and to make sure our hearts are always pliable. You know, uh, I've, I've been, quote, unquote, serving God, so to speak, since 1993. Um, was in a great church in Maryland, was, uh, went to Bible school, and, and, and I, I can say, you know, I can say I, I'm, I'm, I'm seasoned. I've, um, you know, I've, I've, been ar- I've been around a while. I've seen, I've seen different moves of God. I've seen certain things, and, and if you're not careful, that attitude is not right. And, and we can be careful. It's like, oh, I've, you know, and another, another thing is, of, oh, I've heard this message before. Or... Oh, um, oh, I, I don't like that worship song on a Sunday morning. I prefer a different worship song on a Sunday morning. Um, you know, we can worship worship and, and totally leave God out of, the, out of the box. I mean, totally like, where's God in it? Well, as long as they played that song I like that makes me feel good, then I was in the presence of the Lord. Maybe you weren't. Maybe you were in your flesh and your flesh felt good. But see, we can, we can, get, we can get Christianized. <laughs> and that's where we have to always look at it. And, and there's attitudes that can permeate our Christian life subtly and not even realize it. But there's this attitude that I already know it. I've already been there. And I can even tell my pastor what needs to happen. And I'm not saying these things because someone that's happened. I'm not saying, I'm just, <laughs> just so you know, I don't, I don't preach angry. I don't preach letters I get. I don't, that, that's not, that's not me. You know, I, T.D. Jake said this, you know, when people leave your church, have the gift of goodbye. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> people that leave your church may not be tied to the destiny of your church. So there's, there's some things I pray about when people leave and ask, okay, what's my part and how am I supposed to respond and, and humble myself as a pastor saying, what could I do different. Do I need to respond in a certain way? There's, there's a, there's a, just a, I want to make sure I'm operating in humility in whatever I'm doing. And it's just so, so our walk with God has to be this, this constantly walking with this humility because there's, like I said, there's this attitude that can permeate the Christian's life that said, I've already attained. And give me something new. Give me a new revelation. 
I need a new revelation. Well, you haven't done the last one. Give, give, give me something that's going to move me. Yeah, tickle my ears. I better get into that. It's already 7.41, so I see. Lord, help me only do what to say what I need to say, what you want me to say, Father. I got a new Bible, so it's like I, I'm still, I mean, I know where it is, but it's usually, I say, okay, it's on this side of the page, it's on that side of the page, and so I got a new Bible, so I'm like, okay, where is that scripture at? Um, I know where it is. Well, Paul says here in, uh, in 3, 10, uh, 3 verse 10, it says, my determined purpose is that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. Down in verse 12, he says, not that I've already attained. Wait a minute, you're talking about the Apostle Paul. He wrote two-thirds in the New Testament, but yet his attitude was, it's not that I already attained. But yet somehow, sometimes we think we have. And so it's like, it, it, there's this, when, when did, let me just pose it this way. When did you get satisfied with your relationship with God? Are you satisfied with your relationship with God? And if you say, yeah, I'm satisfied with my relationship with God, then that lets me know that you have the attitude of, I've already attained. Now, I'm not saying that, that we can be content with where we are. We, can, we, we're do, we know we're doing what God's called to do. But I, I'm, I'm here tonight to, to kind of provoke you in a way where you say, you know what? There's something more than where I'm at right now. There's something more than what I experienced this past Sunday. And there'll be something more when I come to this Sunday. There'll be something more when I wake up tomorrow morning to spend time with the Lord. Because maybe tomorrow morning, as I continue to press into Him, that I'm going to receive some wisdom that I've been praying for for the last 10 years. Years. But sometimes we get satisfied. Well, okay, I'm okay where I'm in right here. But yet, but yet there's a press that needs to take place in order for us to pull in and to receive all that he wants for us. But, but we kind of like limit him with our satisfaction. But Paul said, not that I've already attained. Or am I already perfect, perfected? But I press on that I may lay hold of of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Now, now get this right. It's not, it's not laying hold of money. It's not even laying hold necessarily of healing. It's not laying, even laying hold of wisdom. But yet it deals with all those things. But what is he saying? I want to lay hold of the very thing that laid hold of me. Paul's saying, I, I, it's not that I've already attained and it's not that I'm already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of the one that laid hold of me, meaning the one that I encountered on the road to Damascus, the one that knocked me off my donkey, the one that, that I saw in bright light, in, in bright light and the one that, that told me to go to this place. And when I went to that place, the man Ananias that he told me was going to be there was there. He laid hands on my eyes, the scales fell off and he spoke to me and he told me to go preach to the Gentiles. That one, that, the one that, that, that caused me to have an encounter, he, he said, he says, I want to continue to lay hold of him. Now, like I said, it, it's not that it doesn't involve money or healing or any of those things, because when we lay hold of Christ, we are laying hold of those things. My, I, I don't, I, 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 too often as believers, we can get in the, in the, in the rut of pursuing an outcome, and so focused on the outcome. And when the outcome doesn't happen, we get frustrated and we walk away from God. I've seen it time and time again at church that, that my, my prayer wasn't answered in the time frame that I thought it should happen. Or, or why did this happen, God? And why did you let this happen? And why did this happen? And we walk away from God because our, our hope and expectation was in an outcome, not the one that brings the outcome. So the Apostle Paul is saying, I'm going to lay hold of the one laid hold of me, meaning my pursuit is the one that pursued me. The one that showed up on that road, that's the one I'm pursuing. I press on that I may lay hold of that to what Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. 
He says it again. I'm not saying that I've already apprehended. Thank you, Father. But one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind. And I reach forward to those things which are ahead. See, that's, that's, either, that's either negative or positive. You know, there's some good things that you, you may have to leave behind because good things can cause you to settle in your present. Oh, yeah, back in, back in 1963, we had a move of God. And you keep going back to 1963 and saying, oh, we need a move of God like 1963. No, we need a move of God like 2022. Now we can, now we can, we we can refer to that, and we can say, "Yeah, I, 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 I want something greater," and that should propel us to something greater. But we look back, but yet, but yet, even we go back there. Are you doing what caused the move of God in 1963? So these, he's not. He, I hear that the heart of the apostle Paul, and he's not satisfied. He, he's not satisfied with what he's, what he's experienced up to that time. He's saying, I'm pressing, I'm pressing. And if, I, if I'm going to obtain more, then I've got to forget things that are behind. That's the negative and that's the positive. <clears throat> Why? Because God's always doing something now. He's doing something now. Yes, I want, to, I, want to, I want to have great memorials of great breakthroughs. I want to have great testimonies of, of, of things that God has done so I, can, so I can worship God, so I can praise God, so I can rehearse and, and those types of things. But, but at the same time, I'm rehearsing those things because I know there's something more. Not just saying, hey, yeah, I, I, man, God did great things for me. And if he, I, I'm good, I'm good. I'm not. I, why? Because if I get settled with where I am, then I also limit my ability to impact the next generation. If I get settled with where I am, how is, how is the fire in someone else's heart going to burn? If I'm not on fire, why would anyone else be? If your pastor isn't on fire, you probably never will be. So as a pastor, I can't, I can't just say, oh, hey, it's, you know, we, we're, we're, we're doing good as a church. We have great attend- we have great offerings. We have great things. God's doing great things. And, and if I get settled with, with where we are and, I never, and I'm not pressing into God, then you won't. I, I love what I learned from Jack Hayford and had... What an amazing opportunity. I had a week to, to go in Jack Hayford's home, Annette and I, and, and spend a week with him and... And um, it was just about, it was about uh, five other pastors um, and there was, some, there was like a couple of businessmen and it was just so personal and intimate. And for the whole week, it was like eight hours a day for the whole week that he talked about the heart. The whole thing was called the heart of a pastor. Oh, goodness. It was something that just totally just changed my idea. And, and one of the things that had stuck with me, and it, I, I don't know if we were in his home at that time, when we had dinner at his house and I can't remember if that was the time or not when he said this, he goes, but he talked about, he goes, no, pastors, hear my heart. He said, he goes, your people will never lift their hands higher than you. If you don't, if you don't go, if you don't go, if you don't go to, into a promised land, they won't either. If you're stuck, they'll be stuck. Now that's not saying that it all depends on Everything depends on me. It's just what I want you to hear is a mentality. I can't stay where I am and be satisfied. If I do, then can God really use me to my full ability? So you have to ask yourself the same question. Am I satisfied with where I am? Have I feel like I attained or is there something much, much more? So he says, I press, I press on the mark. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now let's go down to verse 17. And this is something I don't necessarily think I've dealt with before. And I've taught out this, but in, in in a different way. 
Because this is, all, this is all part of Paul talking to the church of Philippi. But in verse 17, he says, Brethren, join in following my example. And note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. He's saying that I, I'm your pattern. I'm your pattern. You know, uh, going back to the fact that I'm, uh, as a pastor, I need to, I need to Dr. Savell is, is a pattern. I'm, I'm a pattern. And so he's encouraging them for, he goes, he's telling them, so walk as you have us for a pattern. So then it, he takes a break here and he says, for many walk. For many walk of whom I've told you often and how tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is their destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame. Who set their mind on earthly things for our, for our citizenship is in heaven. What is he saying? He goes, follow us as a pattern, but he's saying, but you have to be careful because there's other people walking. There's people that are the enemy at the cross. There's people that, that, that they're only following what benefits them. They're only following on, on how it, how it, um, the, it just satisfies their belly. It's, it's, it's only for, um, their, I'm trying to think of the right words, Father. The bottom line is here, who are you pursuing? What are you pursuing? So he's telling them what, that he hasn't apprehended. And he tells us that he's pressing on towards the mark. And he tells, then he tells them, hey, follow the pattern. Follow us as a pattern and don't follow the enemy. Don't follow the ones that are following their flesh. Because then he says this, for our citizenship is in heaven. Where's your citizenship? Are you? <laughs> you know, they, John the Bass, they asked a question and they said, Jesus, where are you from? She <laughs> said, I'm from above. <laughs> I'm from above. That's what Jesus' response was. Now, that can kind of sound kind of weird to a person that has no, no clue about Christianity. And you go up to them and they're, you're, like, you're, you're like, hey, hey, Joseph, where are you from? You're like, well, I'm from above, brother. And they're like, <laughs> now, I'm not talking about being flaky and stupid, all right? <laughs> but the point is, is we have to understand that where our citizenship is. Yes. Yes. So, so Paul is telling them, pattern, walk after the same pattern. Don't walk out after them because their citizenship is of the earth. But follow and walk after us because we know that our citizenship is of heaven. And then he says this. Where am I? Thank you, Lord, for a new Bible. Hallelujah. For our citizenship is in heaven. Now listen to this. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior. Now think about that. So he's talking about walk, at, walk in the same way that I do, but don't walk after, like, like the enemies to the cross are, but walk after us. Our citizenship is of heaven. And then he tells us what? He says, for which we also eagerly wait for the Savior. Eagerly wait for the Savior. Are you eagerly waiting for the Savior? <clears throat> You hear this in Paul's tone. I haven't already apprehended. He's saying, follow the same pattern. Follow me because I'm a citizen of heaven. And what is he doing? So, so if, if Paul was saying, I'm eagerly waiting for the Savior, then he's telling them if they're to walk the same way, that means you and I need to be eagerly waiting, expecting, looking for, walking with, being connected to, Waiting on, waiting on is trusting in, waiting on is spending time with, waiting on is reflecting on, waiting on is meditating on, waiting on. Where are you getting your strength from? It's from me eagerly waiting on the Lord. That's what Paul is saying here. So I eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. Who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. 
Now look at verse four, chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, so this, it's, it's not a, even though it's a new chapter, it's still the same thought, okay? He says, therefore. So because you're follow, following this pattern, because you're a citizen, citizen of heaven, a citizen of heaven, and you're eagerly waiting for the Savior, what does he say here? Therefore, my beloved, and long for brethren, my joy and my crown, what does he say? So stand fast in the Lord. So this was the encouragement. This was how, how they were to walk. This is how they're to live. He's saying, I'm, I haven't apprehended. I'm pressing on towards the mark. Walk like I walk. You're a citizen of heaven. So, so, what, so what do we do? How do we walk? We stand fast. We stand fast in the Lord. Now, we think of stand fast, we think of being unmovable. But what I want you to see, this stand fast is more than just being immovable. The stand fast and stand firm has to do with being fixed in fellowship. Standing fast in the Lord is, is not just saying, enemy, you can't move me, but why can't he move you? He can't move you because of who you've had an encounter with. And who you're fellowshipping with. You see, this is what the Apostle Paul was trying to establish in them. Meaning, it doesn't matter anything else that's going on. It doesn't matter where you might be. The thing is, as you're pressing on, and the thing that we have to do is stand fast, stand firm in the Lord. Stand firm in fellowship. Stand firm. This means, this means the encounter doesn't stop. See, if you just, fellowship is not a one-time event. Fellowship is something that's continual. Stand fast in the Lord. Thank you, Father. You know, God's desire is, is always relationship. His desire is always to encounter a people of faith. The Bible says he, he goes throughout the whole earth looking for someone's heart that is perfect towards him. Now think about that. He, he's looking for people that will pursue him, not for what they can get, but just to be with him. When the last, you know... We have to make sure that our prayer life doesn't consist of that we're praying for things. Make sure our prayer life, it doesn't consist of what we can get. Yeah, there's times that we declare. There's times that we confess. There's times, that, there's times for that. But the thing is, is when was the last time that you said, I just want to be in your presence? Is his presence enough? His desire, you know, Psalms chapter 8 verse 4 says, says that he, it says, the angels are talking and, and they says, what is man that you're mindful of him? I think it's, or the son of man that you would even visit him. Now think about that. This, the angels are having a question, I believe, in, uh, talking to God in heaven and they're asking this question, what is this thing, man, that you've made that you like so much? That you'd want to visit him? You are Elohim. Why would you want to visit this thing that you've made called man? Because he loves man. He desires to visit. And, and the thing is with, with God is he just doesn't visit to visit. He's always out He's always out for change. So your time fellowshipping with him is, is not just to say, what, wasn't that a great time in his presence today? No, it was that there, there would be something that he would have added to you. 
I, I wrote a couple of examples down in, in, um, in actually the word visit in itself and the word visitation in itself means this. It means to come near and rest upon. But it's not just come near and rest upon, but it's come near and rest upon with a goal or a purpose. So when God comes near to something, it's not just to show up, but he comes near with a goal or a purpose. You can make note of this. Zephaniah 2 verse 7 says, God shall visit them for their relief and restore them from their captivity. Luke chapter 1, uh, 68 says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Verse 78 says, The day spring on high has visited us. But it's not just a visit. It goes on to say this, To guide, to give light to them that sit in darkness and to guide our feet into a way of peace. So the day spring on high visiting was with a purpose. The day spring on high visiting was for the fact to give light to them that sit in darkness and to guide our feet into a way of peace. So we're to stand fast in the Lord. Meaning, meaning the, the pri most priority is, 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 is Him. And it's out of that relationship that everything flows and everything functions. Thank you, Father. Go to John. Man, should I get into this, Lord? Go to John chapter 12. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just seeing how much time I have. John chapter 12. I think it's verse 19. Start in verse 19. It says, The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You, you, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now think about that statement for a moment. The Pharisees are talking to themselves, and, and I love this statement because, because the, ter the Pharisees are really ticked off. <laughs> they're really not liking this guy, Jesus. And, and so be, the whole thing is they're kind of mad because they sent them to do an assignment to stop what he was doing, and, and they're, like, they're going, they said, they said among themselves, you see that you're accomplishing nothing, meaning we want to tell you to do something, but you're, you're not doing nothing. <laughs> and he goes, look, the world has gone after him. Uh, see, that's what, uh, that's the place that we need to get in the last days where the world is going after Jesus. The world is going after Jesus. Verse 20 says, Now therefore were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethesda of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. You see, at this time, it's like people are just saying, hey, the world's going after him. And now we're seeing these Greeks coming in. They're like, we want to see Jesus. But yet I know a lot of believers that will care less if they see Jesus. See, this, this goes back to what, where's your heart? This goes back to your attitude. Attitude. See, if you, if you feel like you've already apprehended, then seeing Jesus will be, not be a big deal to you. But, you know, I, I'll let you know, I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus in me. I want to see Jesus in you. I want to see Jesus in the church. I want to see Jesus in the streets. I want to see Jesus everywhere I go, and he's only going to be able to see that through you and me. But we have to fix our attitude to not be, I'm satisfied. Because Jesus said this, he goes, he goes, <clears throat> he goes, I must be about my father's business. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is still day. He said, I finished down to the last detail. John 17, I finished down to the last detail everything you had me do. Why? Because he wasn't satisfied with just 
what he'd experienced up to that time. You know, he could have got baptized by the Holy Spirit, came up out of the water, went into the, went into the wilderness, had three temptations, came out and said, I've had enough. I'm satisfied. I, you know, hey, man, we, I, it was like a dove, got the Holy Spirit on me. Whew, hey, I got this made. I, I'll just stop here. And sometimes that's where the church stops. And they're satisfied with, you know, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, and oh, I've got the Holy Spirit. But yet we stop there. I'm so grateful Jesus just didn't stop at being filled with the Holy Spirit. They sought to see Jesus. They came to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me try to wrap this up. Man, I've got like... <laughs> Thank you, Father. Just make note of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10 and 11. It talks about the Gentiles will seek him and says, and the rest will be glorious. See, when you seek him, when you're connected to him, there's a rest that comes upon your life. God is not just out for appointments. He wants habitations. He's, he, he, he's not totally into just moments. He, he likes the idea of dwell. God's not just into passing through. He prefers abide. Thank you, Father. But yet even people that walk with Jesus got sidetracked from what they once were captivated by. Let me say that again. Even people that walked with Jesus got sidetracked from what they once were captivated by. For example, John 6, 66, it says, From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. Wow, it's one of the saddest statements in the Bible to me. They walked with him no more, but yet they were captivated by him. Luke chapter 9, you can just mark these, 57 through 62, is when Jesus encounters, and there's a guy, a guy that actually comes to Jesus first and saying, hey, can I, can I follow you? And Jesus responds, he says, uh, foxes have holes, birds in the air have a nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay, lay his head. And see, some people would bring that out and say, oh, it's because Jesus was poor. No, he just wasn't in his hometown anymore. So what is he saying? He's saying, following me is inconvenient. Following me is inconvenient. It may, may not be the way you think it's going to look. Following, in, it is about being con following Jesus is about continuing to be captivated by Jesus. Also in that same chapter, there's, then right after that, Jesus asked a, a man, said, can you, you know, follow me? And he goes, well, let me first go bury my father. And Jesus knew what that meant because in that time, you would mourn for like a year. And so he's like, well, just, just, hold, just hold on. And see, sometimes it's like you're captivated and you want to follow, but there's other things more important. And the third thing in that same chapter in Luke 9 was there's one, one guy was like, well, I'll follow you. He goes, but I, I first have to go back here. And then Jesus says, well, a man that looks back is not, uh, is not fit back. It's not, it's not fit for the kingdom of God. What is he saying? Following me is not convenient. Let me, this some of these thoughts. Human nature gets bored with the extraordinary. And we want the next new thing. We can be offended at what we don't understand. And we may not truly understand the importance of the calling to follow. These are just things on why, why, do, why do, if we've been captivated, why don't we continue being captivated? It's because of some of these things. I'm kind of going fast. I'm not, I'm, I wish I had time to, to unpack some, some of these things a little more. Uh, thank you, Father. But I'll close with this. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Are you getting something out of this tonight? Yes, sir. Are you captivated by him? You can answer. Are you captivated by him? Stand firm, stand fast in the Lord. Thank you, Father. This is the Apostle Paul encouraging the church of Ephesus. He's about to leave and they're not going to see him anymore. Let me, let's look at verse 29. He goes, For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves, 
And it's, it's, not, it's not talking about animals, it's talking about people. For I know this, that after my depart, departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to what? Draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God, to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Now, just hold your place there. And if you go back earlier and check, because he said, for three years, I was with you. Night and day, I was with you and I was preaching to you for three years every day in the temple. What was, what was some of the things he was, he was preaching? Look at verse 19. Actually, verse 18. And when they had come to him, he said to them, you know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Those were the things that he was preaching for three years. He was preaching what? Repentance towards God, meaning, meaning God's a priority in my life. I, I submit my life to God. He, what was he preaching to them? Faith towards Jesus Christ, that Jesus is a priority, that my faith, my relationship, everything is about this relationship with Jesus. So when he goes down and he says, for three years, I was preaching to you, they knew what he was talking about. He was talking about this repentance. He was talking about this faith towards Jesus Christ, meaning this relationship with God is the most important thing. Now, let me go back and let me close with this thought. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Now he's saying, it's faith toward Jesus, all the things I shared with you. But it's also having an encounter with the word. Don't belittle the word of God. Sometimes we can, we can take the word of, word of God for granted. But when you encounter the word, you are encountering him. When you encounter the word, you're encountering Jesus. When you encounter the word, you're encountering God's nature, God's character, everything that he is. So that's his encouragement to them. When he leaves, he says, I commend you to God, meaning I'm giving you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you inheritance. So let's not count that we've apprehended. Let's not be satisfied. But let's pursue him, pursue his word, and let's make him, his word, his house, his presence a priority as we continue to cultivate ongoing encounters. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word tonight, and I thank you for the challenge that it brings. But I thank you as the word brings a challenge, the challenge is to take us from glory to glory. I'm not out just for revival, Father. I'm out for glory to glory. I'm out for going from glory to glory. And I'm out for every single one of us to go from glory to glory. From glory to glory. From faith to faith. From strength to strength. Lord, I declare that we're coming up higher. And I declare, Father, in each one of us tonight, I pray that there would be a, there would be a hunger birthed on the inside of our hearts to not be satisfied with your word, not be satisfied with your presence, and not, not be satisfied by your house. But we press in. We press in to all that you have for us in 2022. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give him a shout of praise if you receive that tonight. Drew, come on up. All right. What a word. How many of you got something out of that tonight? 
I know I did. Well, um, I have the pleasure of, you know, doing, receiving the offering tonight. And so I'm going to quick just go over the characteristics that Brother Jerry had shared with us um, not too long ago. He said, the four characteristics, and if you still got your notes out, write these down. The four characteristics of tithing. Number one, requires faithfulness. Number two, requires discipline. Number three, requires consistency. And number four, demonstrates gratitude. Um, real quick, in corporate prayer on Monday night, um, if you're not coming to that, you're missing out. First of all, you're missing out. Um, the spirit fell and took over and we started praying things out. And what seemed to be the theme of corporate prayer on Monday night, and it's at seven o'clock, you should come. What seemed to be the theme was unlimiting God, taking the lid off of God, taking the lid off of our thinking, um, throwing the weights off, um, doing away with distractions, doing away with the things that you know easily ensnare us, that we would recognize it early. And this all got prayed out. You know, we prayed over all of you, prayed over the body of Christ. Um, and so I just want to encourage you, you know, let's let's take the lid off. Let's be faithful. Let's be faithful to say, Lord, I bring this to you because I'm faithful to you. And so I bring this to you as a demonstration of faithfulness. I'm not faithful to just my job as my income, but that everything I put my hand to do prospers because of you. And discipline, you know, sometimes it's crucifying the flesh to give. You know, it might hurt a little bit. You might look at your account and be like, man, an extra taco would be great today. But I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm go ahead and give. You know, and it requires consistency. You know, to come in, check after check, week after week, and to give to God, to demonstrate that faithfulness consistent, consistently, and to, be, to be, have gratitude, be thankful. Lord, I'm thankful that because of you, I have this to give. You know, that's what it's all about. If we did this in every area of our life, I was talking to a good friend this week, if we would just be diligent every day for just a week, what could happen in our lives? If we would just do, be faithful, be disciplined, be consistent, and be thankful for just a week, the things that would break loose in our life. But real quick, I'm going to close with this. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verses, verse 7, I'm just going to give you a challenge. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 in the Passion Translation. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. Verse 8, yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. But I just want to emphasize the part of let giving flow from your heart. Don't just get stuck in the box, in the lid of it having to be, you know, the 10%, it having to be a specific amount. Every, before you come in or every time you come in, don't just give because I'm up here talking about giving. Get with God and ask him, Lord, do you want the 10% or do you want more? And just listen and just let it flow out of your heart and do what he tells you to do and just take the lid off. Don't, don't, don't box your giving. You know, I get excited when he tells me to give more. I get excited because I'm a citizen of heaven. And so I'm going to see the end before the beginning. I'm going to see that in him asking me to give more, I'm opening myself up to receive more. And so I just challenge you tonight that as we give, just, you know, give out of the flow of your heart and ask him, Lord, what amount do you want? Because I want to be faithful and disciplined and consistent with you. And I will be thankful for everything that you do in my life. Lord, any amount that you ask me to give, I'll give it right now because I know that you supply all my needs. And so, you know, the way to give, we can Go online, we can text to give, ushers, um, you've got an envelope um, and a seat back in front of you, or get one from an usher if you're in the front row, but let's go ahead and do that, and just take a couple minutes to get with God right now, and just ask him, Lord, what, what do you want? What do you want me to give tonight? Because I'm willing to be stretched. Amen? Yeah. Ushers, you may receive the offering. 
Just a few announcements before we let you go tonight. February kicks off the 2022 Victorious Adults. So Victorious Adults, your first meeting is Saturday, February 5th. So not this Saturday, but next Saturday at 11 a.m. So you can check the Church Center app for those details as well. And aren't you enjoying First Things First? I know I am. If you haven't been a part of First Things First, you can still go on the Church Center app go to groups and sign up for that. Um, the only reason I say sign up is because every morning at like 6 a.m., we get a text that says, good morning, prayers, and it's just so encouraging. And then it tells us what Bible reading is that day. And so, you know, when, when it comes to my phone, it just makes me think of all the other 190 of you that are doing the exact same thing I'm doing at the exact same time. And it's so encouraging because one can put 1,000 to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight, right? So if you haven't signed up with that, for that yet and you want to, you can still go into the Church Center app, groups, sign up for First Things First, and be a part of that group every morning. Also, the church is open at 633, based on First Things First. If you want to come here to pray, you can pray here at the church from 633 to 733, or at home, however you want to do it. Now, before we leave tonight, we need to stack all the chairs. So if you're here and you can stay a little bit longer and help us stack the chairs here in the sanctuary, we're going to stack all of them. Um, we have something here at the church to Friday night, so we need to clear the room. Were you blessed tonight? Amen. Let's pray. I'm going to pray over you before we go. Father, we just thank you for the word that you brought tonight, Father, that is able to change our lives, that is able, like you said, your word of grace that will build us up and give us our inheritance. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you will remind us this week to go further, to go deeper to apprehend like we've never apprehended before. Father, we want the fullness of the blessing so that we can be a blessing. <laughs> In Jesus' name, Father, I call this crowd blessed. As we go out, we are victories and blessings going somewhere to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Go give them Jesus.